Before watching this video, you should consider watching the previous video in the playlist on the range function. This can be accessed by clicking here on the video or in the description below. Let's consider this program here and let's run it. Now when I run it, I get this runtime here. Let's just put this down here so we can compare the runtime with the program. Let's have a general look at the program first. Here you can see I have a print statement. Here you can see I have an iteration construct or a repetition construct and it's the for loop in Python. And this is followed by another print statement here. Now the first print statement and the last are not part of the loop. Whereas these two lines here are part of the loop and we can see that because they are in Dented. And of course, remember we always, or we recommend that you indent with four spaces. And like other similar constructs in Python, we can see we have this colon here. Now, on this line, I've introduced a variable called count. And I'm saying for count in, and in brackets, I've got 0, 1, and 2. Now, the 0, 1, and 2, well, we're going to see what they do in a moment. So let's start the program and we can see that this line is executed which is print I am a string before the iteration and of course that is responsible for outputting this line of code here I am a string before the iteration. Then we come to this line and it says for counting and in brackets it's got a 0, a 1 and a 2 all separated by a comma and count will take up the value of 0 which I will put over here for us to easily view it and then we go into the loop and we print this off here I am a string within the iteration and we can see in the runtime this is this particular line here then we come to this line and now this is responsible for outputting this literal string here the count value is and we can see that here and of course, then we can see we've got a comma and then the word count. Now, this is the variable that was introduced on this line here. And we can see it's a zero. So what gets output is a zero in this particular position here. We then have to realize we're in a loop. So we go back to this line. And of course, we now can see that the count, well, it must be a one. And I'll change it over here so we can see that we're storing it for easy reference in view. And then we go on to this line. And this prints I am a string within the iteration, which of course displays this on the screen. And then of course I go on to this line. And what this does, it outputs the literal string and the value of count. Well, of course, we can see here that the value of count is 1. And if we look at this line, we can see it has output the literal string the value is together with the value of count. And then we have to realize we go back to this line here. And now we can see that we're going to look at this 2 as being what's stored in count. And I'll change that over here so we can visually see that count is now 2. And of course, I now go into the loop and I execute this. Or should I say the program executes this? And consequently, we have this line here. I am a string within the iteration. Then we go on to this line, which outputs the literal string and the current value of count, which is 2. And we can see that here it says the count value is 2. Now, of course, if we have a look at this line again, we can see we've gone into the loop for when the count was 0, 1, and 2. So we've done all of the paths through the loop that this allows there are no other values for count so we can see we leave the loop and we execute this line here print i am a string after the iteration and we can see that that is printed here so that's a single step description through this particular program and of course it's a bit of a nonsense program but it's there to show us the mechanics for this particular for loop We'll see in some of the programs that are coming up that this particular loop is very handy for manipulating lists and we can see how useful the range function is that we introduced in the last video in the playlist.
here you can see another program that contains a for loop and if you look at this particular for loop you can see I've cut it down compared to the last one in the sense that there's only one line in the loop which is this line here which says print the count value is and then we're outputting whatever the count value is as we can see here after the comma now if we look in this area we can see that this is not comma one comma two comma three all the way up to nine and just before the loop I have a print statement and just after the loop I have a print statement now I'm going to come to here I'm going to run this particular small program here's the runtime which I'll just put to one side here and what we can now see that it's gone round the loop well how many times well it's gone round for when the loop was zero for when the loop was one all the way up to when the loop was nine as we can see from these outputs here so we can see that this line was responsible for outputting this this line was responsible for outputting this and all of these lines here were output one at a time every time it went round the loop and of course we can see it goes from zero through to nine because here we go from zero through to nine here is the program we've just been looking at and we can see here that we have the actual runtime now what I'm going to do I'm going to edit this particular program and here you can see the actual change to the program if we look at the first line here and here we can see they're exactly the same if we look at the last line here and here we can see they're exactly the same here we've got a for loop here we've got a for loop if we look inside the loop here and here we can see they're exactly the same what we've changed is this look here you can see I've gone 0 comma 1 comma 2 all the way up to 9 whereas here I've used range and now this particular function was looked at in the previous video but very very briefly what we can see is that we start at a 0 we go up to but not including 10 in other words this is the stop value and we stop before this and we go up in steps of 1 now when this particular program is run this is the output we get now if you compare both outputs you can see they're exactly the same so what in fact this here has done it has produced this number sequence okay let's have a look at this program running I'll come to here and I'll run the module and you can see that I have this particular output here now if we look at this line here I am a string before the iteration that's what has produced this here at the output and if I look at the very last line here that's been produced by this particular line of code now here you can see I've got a loop and that loop has been responsible for all of these outputs here because we can see we started at zero and we went up to but not including the 10 because 10 is the stop value and we're going up in steps of one you can see we go from zero to one to two to three and we go as far as nine because the stop value as we can see over here is in fact a 10 what I'm going to do now I'm going to shut this runtime down I'm going to come to here and I'm going to change that to 100 and then I'm going to come up to here and I'm going to run it save it and this is what we're going to get as the output and you can see it went round the loop there quite a number of times if I scroll back up to look at the output we can see it started off with I am a string before the iteration and then when we went into the loop it output 0 1 2 3 4 because over here you can see we're going up in steps of 1 and if I scroll down here we can see that the last entry it produced in this particular area of the screen is 99 because the stop value was 100 and of course then it produces this I am a string after the iteration which is what this line actually output here now I shut this runtime down I'm going to come to here now and I'm going to change that to 10 and what's going to happen now is going to output 0 then 10 because the step is 10 then 20 then 30 let's check if I'm right so let's run this 
and here is the output let's put it to the side and we can see that the start value is a zero which is precisely what it's output here then we go up in ten so the next one is ten then twenty then thirty then forty all the way up to ninety because we don't include the one hundred because the one hundred was the stop value and then of course I am a string after the iteration is what this particular line output because that wasn't part of the loop hence it's only output it the once I'm going to shut this down I'm going to change this back to one and I'm going to change this now to 1000 and I'm going to run it let's run the module we'll say okay to that to save it and there it goes outputting all of the numbers starting at zero going up in steps of one as we can see here and it'll do that all the way as far as 999 let's put this to one side it's 999 because this is 1000 which is the stop value it doesn't go as far as that now of course the advantage of this range is if I wanted to go to 10,000 another naught there to make it 10,000 100,000 I'll stick another naught there let's just run that um, and then we go we'll say yes and off it goes and we can see it's going to carry on doing that until it reaches the number that is one before the stop value now I'm not going to sit here looking at this so I'll just simply uh, shut that down and um, you can see I've done that already now of course this here if you actually wanted it to go around that many times and you didn't have the range function well what you would have here would be 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 you'd be there all day just typing so we can see that this range gives us the ability to choose how many times we're going to go around this particular loop now I'm going to stop at this point with the for loop because there's an awful lot more we could do on it and we're going to bring more features of the for loop in later and more features of the range but this is the basic functionality of the for loop and the usefulness of the range function but we'll see that the range is going to be used with lists and so on and um, what we call generically collections but just for the time being we've gone far enough with the the for loop check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video on Python